from the Radio Oddity website under support and just scroll all the way to the bottom and they have SDR downloads. The first thing you should download is the SDR driver and then the SDR software. If you download the software and instructions you'll find an old version of the software. So go ahead and just get the first two. I don't want to use this video to get into too much detail, but the files you download from the website are RAR files or RAR files, and I use 7-zip to decompress those files. You open 7-zip and then you browse those files, and then you can extract them. There are other tools like WinRAR, maybe even WinZip would unzip those. If you're not familiar with how to do it, just Google it and, and you'll find many programs that can do it, many free programs. This is the Zadig uh, driver configuration, and the first thing you do is go to Options, List All Devices. Once you've listed all the devices, then you have to look in the list for your device, which is going to be this bulkhead interface. And then once you have that selected, it's going to show you the drivers, the RTL driver, and you want to replace it with this Win USB driver. You just simply click Replace and it installs the driver and now you get the message the driver was successfully installed at this point you can close this application and then we'll go to SDR Sharp which is under SDR pound 1488 in the SDR Sharp program you will go to the SDR Sharp program the SDR Sharp program you go to this drop down here and make sure that your RTL SDR USB is selected then you click on this play button here. And then I'll start your receiver and then you should see the waterfall moving. On the bottom here you have the audio spectrum to show you how the audio sounds along with an IF spectrum. And then you've got the uh, spectrum up here as well. And you can zoom in and out of the spectrum and see what's going on. So if we go over here to the edge, there's this zoom out feature, and you can really see where some strong signals are. So this is uh, quite the zoom in down here. So here's some FM broadcast, this is the 94.7 in the and we're seeing the audio spectrum on the screen there in the eye spectrum. And so I have the antenna up about a foot from the laptop as far away as it would go on the cord and it does sound much better. As you can see I'm at 162.550 which should be the weather for Indianapolis area and as you see in the spectrum I'm actually not on it so I need to calibrate my tuner and you do this in the configuration and setup. So the manual way to adjust this is to go back to where you think the frequency should be which is 162.550 and then we go into the configuration tool here and there's this frequency correction and parts per million and once you're here to change the value until you get to the point where you're aligned with the right frequency. And we're almost at the same one past it. Now we'll zoom in. So it's like either here or here's our best test setting. So our parts per million is 44. 
and that gives us our, um, our calibration that we need so we're on the right frequency. So now we'll go ahead and go back to the amateur room, which is uh, 14670 for one of our local repeaters. So the default antennas that come with your uh, SDR dongle are not really the greatest antennas, unfortunately. Even the telescoping antenna is, is really too close to my laptop and that causes interference. Maybe it's fine for what it was actually designed for, but remember SDR dongles are a hack. And because they're a hack, you have to hack them. So I created a, um, a new antenna out of the antenna that shipped with it. So this is the uh, little antenna and I went ahead and attached a wire to it and I just ran the wire up my window and then it loops over the window and comes back down and that gives me a uh, much better reception for the amateur bands and I imagine all the bands uh, I'm sure it's not designed for a specific frequency because I took a random piece of wire and attached it and I did not solder it I did not tape it I just wrapped it around a few times and I don't know if you can get a good look at that or not but uh, literally, it's just wrapped on there. It'll fall off quickly, but uh, what I would probably do if I was going to keep it permanently would be uh, wrap a piece of black tape on it. And uh, during the class we do, I will probably do just that. I may even um, take another antenna like this. I might order another one, cut it, and connect it to a piece of coax with a PL259 a attached to the end of it so I can attach it to a real antenna. Another note on the antenna is that um, the antenna seems to do better when the base of the antenna is higher than the dongle. I don't know if it's because of my laptop or, or how it's positioned or because my laptop's a tablet and the screen's at the same level as the dongle. Uh, I'm not sure what the interference is coming from, but higher than the laptop seem to work much better. Your results may vary.